Okay. Everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, welcome to Machine Machine Shop Basic Tooling by me, Ani Rude, and Damien, and Alex, who is here in spirit. All right, Damien, start us off. Okay, so the topics we're going to cover today are some of the ideas slash machines in our shop, and uh, I guess the tools and machines are, we're going to cover our calipers, drilling machines, and saws. And it's not always universal, but we will say if certain things are uh, specific to our shop. So we'll start with the caliper. So the characteristics of the caliper, there's three different jaw slash rods to measure parts. There's inside one, which is at the bottom, or well, no, the top part. That's the top. That's for measuring inside, because you push it up against the edges of the thing you're measuring inside of. The outside ones, which is at the bottom part, and that's for measuring the size of the part. Then the depth rod, it just comes out of the other end of the caliper, which isn't shown right now. And the caliper is used for accurate measurements. It can also be used to scribe parts since it's pointy at the jaws. The purpose is, of course, accurate measurements. Yeah, so the upper jaws for internal measurements, lower jaws for external. There's reference edge right there along the back end of the lower jaws. Then there's a depth rod at the end. Then in the middle there's of the caliper, there's a dial. There's a bezel nut, which is used to tighten uh, the dial so it doesn't spin around. Uh, there's the lock screw. I think that one holds the tire thing in the caliper. Um, there's a dial indicator needle that just points to um, the number on the dial. The clamp screw, that one's just for more precise uh, movement of the dial than just using your fingers or hands to pull it. And then the scale is just the scale on the dial. It's usually in inches and one-tenth inches. Okay, drills. So drills are nice since they in the process of removing material in order to make holes, tightening and loosening the screws, and removing roots. The types of drills are the portable drill, the pillar drill, the bench drill, the radial drill, the gang drill, and the multiple drill. The main ones we use are portable, the pillar one, and the bench one. And we'll go over all these shortly. So the hand drill or portable drill. It's pretty basic, versatile. You'll see these most often. And they have two speed options, the low speed option, which is high torque, and a medium speed option which is medium torque and some may also have multiple torque options and they run on, on batteries the purpose of these is for quick prototyping since they're easy to move around adjusting parts usually on the final robot and we can also use them to insert or move squills not squills screws quickly because you can get a bit for that so at the front of the drill in the chuck is the drill bit and the chuck is what you use to tighten the drill bit in place. The very top of the drill is the torque adjustment. Then also near the torque adjustment is the motor. A reverse switch is used for controlling direction of the drill. If it's pointing forward, then it's, that's for drilling in. If it's pointing back towards you, then it's for drilling out. And the speed tr trigger, the more you uh, pull it in, the faster it goes. The handle grip is just where you hold the drill and then the batteries at the bottom. Then the pillar drill and also the drill press is a uh, characteristics. It's more precise than hand drilling. It's fixed in place and you could do more precise movements and measurements. And it's mounted to the ground. Speed and torque is controlled in the head with the belts. So at the top of the drill press, there's a bunch of belts there, and if you want to change the speed or torque, you have to change how the belts are configured. And then it's used for prototyping usually, low accuracy parts or quick changes to parts. 
because it's relatively quick to put a part in and do whatever you need to do on it. Yeah. Then at the top in the drill press, there's the min, uh, motor and spindle pulleys. That's where the belts are. The back of it's motor tension knobs and lock knobs, which is just for locking motor. There's the motor tension lever. And then in the front of the drill press is the on and off switch. Just use those switches to turn it on and off. Below that is the spindle which spins and the chuck, which holds the part in place. And then the def stop, which is near the handles, allows you to lock it in place so you don't have to hold the handle from spinning back up uh, when drilling. And then near at the below the, is the table, which is where you place your part. Usually we have a vise there so you can hold your part in place. And then the table has a table lock lever so you can turn it around or a handle to move it up and down. Yeah, and that's the handle on the bolt and pin. And then at the very end, there's hanging on a string, there's a chuck key which is used to tighten the chuck. So when tightening the chuck, first you put the drill bit in, tighten it by hand, and then use the chuck key to fully tighten it. Then the bench drill press, very similar to the filler drill press, but it's just a smaller version that we put on a table. And it has the same purpose, but we also use it for deburring in the shop or countersinking. So yeah, at the top are the belts, again, similar to the pillar drill press. The drill feeding handle, which you use to uh, drill go up and down. Spindle head is below that, and then there's the spindle and the drill. And below that, there's a table and the table clamp. For the bench drill press in our shop, there's just one handle, which you can use to move it both side to side and up and down. And then the column, the table's on, and the base. So okay. next is the radial drill press. So the characteristics of this drill press is similar to the other uh, drill presses that we have. The head of the machine moves instead of the table. So before um, we had for like, as you can see with the other drill presses that Jamie had mentioned, it's the base that it's like the base or like the vice area or the table um, that moves. For this one, it's actually the head that moves. So this part over here moves, as you can see with like this whole mechanism. So it's way more precise than regular drill presses because it's not the human move. Uh, it's still the human moving it, but the nylon, um, not the table rather than that, rather the, the actual like um, bit that goes, it moves. So the purpose, obviously it's for more precise parts than the uh, regular drill presses that we have and useful, especially when no mill is present. So for people that like don't have space for like a mill, you'll usually find a radial drill press here, but then we don't have that because we have a mill. The other one is the gang drilling machine. So by gang, it means a group. So obviously you can see um, it's like multiple drill presses on one bench and they're all mounted to the ground. And then the drills, um, the drills are moved individually. So as you can see, there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. Um, so usually the drills are mounted in place, which means we move the surface and then this just goes up and down. So the purpose is mass production, obviously, just to get things out quicker. So this would be very useful for prototyping. So and then there's the there's a spindle drilling machine, or which can be used for multiple characteristics is multiple spindles holding the drills together, all held in place and moves together. So these are all like one system. They move with the same mind. Purpose is large number of holes on one part and mass production. Again, useful, very useful for prototyping. Um, and, and if you need a hole, if you need like a lot of holes on one part, this is this will get the job done for you. Next is saws. So the purpose and types of saws that we'll be covering is, so the main purpose of the saw is cutting material to the right size and shortening large materials. When we order metal, we order in bulk. 
um, because that's a that's cheaper and we usually order like good enough for the entire season. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, so usually you'll see 20, 20 foot long pieces of metal just laying on uh, laying outside. That just shows that we're still yet to cut them. And we usually cut them to like um, six feet in length. So the types of bandsaws, there's two types of bandsaws. There's vertical and horizontal. The main one that we use, and actually the only one that we have, is a vertical bandsaw, which I'll cover later. And then we, and then another one that we have is a chop saw, which is used to um, cut the large twenty foot long um, bars outside because we can't fit those inside. And then we have table saw. We hardly use this in the machine shop um, because, well, we have the bandsaw and the chop saw, so we we really don't have a use for a table saw, unless of course it's absolutely needed for, let's say, I don't know, shortening the length of a screw. So the vertical bandsaw. So um, the characteristics of it is it's a saw blade in the shape of a band uh, that rotates around the machine. So if I were to open this uh, thing over here that's labeled not for wood, you'll actually see of the blade in like in a circular shape, sort of. And um, actually, if, you could, if um, this metal sleeve wasn't there, that's where the blade actually is. This is a guard for it. So no one grazing it would accidentally cut themselves. So the blade is held vertically. It moves in this sort of up and down motion, like a sort of like a seesaw. And then material must be manually pushed to cut it. Um, so that's when you would have a spotter next to you and someone would be, and someone else would be cutting it to the length that's desired. And you must use force to push it. And speed can be adjusted in the back. So if you, if you look at the, um, if I had a picture of the back, you can actually control the speed of the blade. And the purpose is just to simply cut down metal for prototyping or machining. This is like sort of the starting point um, when you have when you have your CAD approved and everything, just cutting the material down the length. So this plays a huge role in our machine shop. So this is just like sort of like the parts of the bandsaw. So we start off with our frame, which is like this part over here. We have our on and off switch. We have the blade like I described. This is our base, and then this is all, um, these two points, one over here and one over here, is access to the cabinets. Like I said, if we open this one over here, that's how we get to see our blade up top. And over here, if I open it bottom here, we get to see the blade at the bottom. This is our motor, um, and then this is our table. It's pretty much a vertical bandsaw. Next is a horizontal bandsaw. So it's similar to a vertical bandsaw, but the saw blade is horizontal and brought down to cut. Um, so, and the parts are clamped down. So in this case, you wouldn't require any human motion to push the part. Instead, you would just bring the blade down to it. So it's not as accurate as the vertical bandsaw because while well, it's clamped down and you can't really eyeball it. And the purpose is just cutting obviously large materials. Next is a chop saw. So. It's a saw, it's, um, the characteristics of a chop saw is a saw blade is rotated. So if I can, if you can look at over here, this is actually what's rotated. So it just rotates in, uh, very quickly and, and it's very fast, trust me. And the blade guard is always put on until brought down. So this actually is being brought down. That's why you can see this, see the actual blade, but actually this guard went fully up. You won't be able to actually see the, um, the actual blade, which is very good in terms of safety. And this, and this compared to the other bandsaws, it's much more portable. You can take this where you want to. And since the blade is thick, cuts are not always accurate. So with, uh, as the blade um, in increases in thickness, the accuracy of your cut actually decreases significantly, which is why we only use this to shorten very big and long um, pieces of metal. And the blade can be changed to a grinder instead. A grinder is a simply just like another type of blade. We'll go over that in like another slide or presentation, sorry. So purpose is cutting materials that are thick, um, cutting longer materials that we buy our shop. So if, if you guys actually get to see the shop one day, um, when you walk in and you look behind the CNC, we have just long pillars of material there, all cut to six feet in length by our chop saw. So this is just like the sort of labels of a chop saw. There's the D-type handle, there's the copper motor, 
and there's the spindle lock. Um, there's a screw handle, there's a screw rod base. This is, all, this is our base and this is our grinding wheel. This is our protective cover. And over here, there should be a, there should be a vise. Next is a table saw. So the, saw, the, only, the thing with this is it's a saw blade on the table. It's, there's no accuracy involved in this, which is why the only reason we use it is for prototyping. It's the purpose, it's to cut large pieces of wood. Um, majority of the time, which we started this year, if I'm not wrong, we like to use wood for prototyping as like that'll save a lot of machining time and we can use our new laser cutter in order to cut, um, um, to, in order to make the parts that we need. So that's it guys, you guys have any questions? Any questions? I know that was kind of a big dump again, but um, to TLDR, it's basically the only machines that we actually have in there are the vertical bandsaw. Um, we have the drill press, which I showed the first one, and we do have a table saw, but we hardly use it. And Damien, I can't think of any more. Do you have anything else that we use mainly? We have the chop saw. We do have the chop saw. Yes, I did forget about that. Chop saw, drill press. Uh, I mean, there's also power drills, but they're outside the shop. Right, yeah, but we hardly use the power drills. Yeah, that pretty much sums this up of like the basic stuff that are in the shop. So following from here, we'll, um, we're, we're going to talk about, the, not like today, but like in a later session, we're going to talk about the mill and then the lathe and then cap it all off with the CNC. So yeah, that's like a picture to come. And then after that, we're going to have like a safety presentation on how to handle yourself in the shop and when to stay focused and when to like mess around. So any questions, anyone? Okay, um, Mr. Grady, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, no, nothing to add for me. Okay, um, if that is it, I shall end our recording.